parts and what it is that people are saying. Mm. Just trying to get a, a sense of their, their background, their inclination, their, where, what situation they're in compared to you know, the conversations that we've been having. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting and hopefully over time, there'll be more, um, more understanding. I've done it, I've done this before, but on a different, in a different context. Mm -hmm. And I did find that after a few weeks, you got to know a little bit more about the personalities, but not, not so much. Anyway, mm -hmm. that, but that was, a, that was more of a teaching exercise. So I was doing most of the talking. So here I'm, oh. and I'll be doing most of the listening. So mm -hmm. hey, how did you get on? Um, well, there's a total of four in our group. Um, I thought there was five, there's only four. Um, there's that uh, American monk in Thailand. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's this um, Scottish guy who's living in Hong Kong. And uh, there's a, a Japanese woman who I think is currently in Tokyo, I could be wrong. Um, but yes, I, I think, yes, certainly I found like you found that, you know, it was very difficult to really know where to start um, just because I had no idea where they came from. Mm. Um, and, I, and I guess, you know, I guess I need that. I sort of need to sort of have some sort of framework around the person in order to know, you know how they're going to communicate and you know, what their background is and things like that. Uh, of course, they introduced themselves, which is obviously obviously helpful. But yeah, it, it takes some time to, you know, I guess it's not only a matter of trust, but getting vocabularies in, in sync. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's probably going to be the, the hardest challenge given the time that, that is available. Um, uh, the, all, the other three were, um, were you know, they, they very much came, come from um, the Buddhist traditions. Oh, right. um, apart from the guy from Scotland, who, who I think sort of was you know, more into Zen. Um, so, um, but, but in any, any ways, it was, um, yeah, I think it was, um, I guess, a good start. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, I guess, strange speaking to people who are, you know, coming from, from a particular framework background and, and only really referencing that, that particular framework um, and who have not yet really explored a lot outside of the, that framework. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, that's going to be the difficulty for me. Were they, did they have any experience of secular Buddhism and why did they, why were they on the course? Had they done anything previously? Well, um, I think in, in all cases, it was just sort of a, a, you know, a fascination with a, a secular dharma. Um, that, that, that was my impression, that the fact that oh, this is, you know, Buddhism without all the crap. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't say that, of course. Um, but, <laughs> well, but, but, uh, <laughs> the vocabulary. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that, I guess that was you know, the basis. But you know, even, I guess my problem is even with that basis, I'm still looking outside that even that early Buddhist framework. Um, you know, I'm sort of starting at a point where I'm saying, well, you know, the Buddha's Dharma, well, it's a good start, uh, but it's not finished. <laughs> Um, that's sort of my basic idea, I guess. Um, the, the, the incompleteness or inadequacy of, of, of the Buddhist Dharma. Um, and, and, you know, but, but while at the same time acknowledging that that's extremely useful, you know, what, what, what is expressed in, in, in that Dharma. Um, I, I used to, I think I might have mentioned this before, I used to, I did mention to uh, Martin a few times actually, but that, that it concerned me that um, 
that I didn't disagree, not fundamentally, didn't disagree fundamentally with, with anything that Stephen and the other early Buddhist people were putting forward. Um, and the reason it sort of disturbs me is because I guess I'm a, a born oppositionist, you know, a political animal that sort of looks for, for arguments for and against. And, you know, I was finding it quite difficult to, um, to find fault in this Buddha's Dharma as expressed um, by, by the early Buddhists. Um, until I sort of realized that, you know, that wasn't the problem. The problem was for me was the scoping was that it was only part of the story, and that it was incomplete as far as I was concerned. It was a, an incomplete dharma because it sort of left out in a, in a lot of ways uh, um, uh, interpersonal and uh, intergroup connection in particular. Um, even though it was you know. Uh, uh, Gautama quite clearly said, and you know, I think he, he said a, number, in a couple of places, you know, um, basically saying that friendship or, or connection is, is, you know, is all of the Dharma. That, that is what it's all about, is that connection. I think it's just that sort of you know, group level connect, connectivity and uh, individual connectivity that, that uh, is, is as yet missing from from uh, the, the Buddha's Dharma. Maybe it was there to begin with, but I, you know, I somehow doubt it. Um, yeah, so I guess that, you know, when, when you come into a group with that approach, and obviously you're not gonna be always talking about the same thing. You know, if you're coming at it from an approach of inadequacy rather than this isn't, this isn't true or that is false. You know, it's just a, for me, just a, a question of scope. And the fact that, or, or the, my thought that uh, the Dharma, as expressed uh, by, by, by Buddha, is um, the start rather than a complete Dharma. Yeah, well, as you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm of a mind with you. Um, but the reason I asked them about whether they were, what their previous experience was, because through, I think three, we had. There were seven in our group. Oh, that many. Yeah, and three of them had done the first of the two-year course that we did. Mm -hmm. So they had already been through a, a similar process because obviously mm -hmm. Stephen's ideas have modified from the yeah. first course to the second course that we were on. Mm -hmm. But it meant that there was a, at least some recognition of a sort of shared experience because they've been on a, a two year mm. secular Dharma course. And the other, that was three, it was me and Elfie, that's five. So the other two certainly seem to have a similar approach in that I, I don't think anybody was Buddhist in the sort of traditional terms that have come from a, a, a Buddhist, Buddhist, a strong Buddhist tradition. They'd all come at it tangentially. So it was, so there was a more of a common ground, I think, to begin with. But then again, you just don't know quite what their individual framework is um mm -hmm. although there's obviously some 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 connections mm -hmm. there's quite there were two that were jewish and there was quite an interesting discussion mm -hmm. about the similarities and dissimilarities between becoming interested in buddhism as a, a philosophy and being born into being born a Jew, which is mm -hmm. not something you can ever not be. Is, I think, what, 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 so that was, you know, that, was good. that was interesting. There was an interesting perspective mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but whether how this will develop, um, I don't know. Um, 
did you manage to find out what their backgrounds or, or you know, professions or um, areas of interest were? Did they sort of express? I don't anything? think we actually talked about that. I can't remember that we, we mentioned that. Actually, what we what people did, it was more to do with this is where my interest comes from. Because two of them, at least two, were were uh, trustees of Bodhi College. So mm -hmm. I presume either, um, and um, they had a lot more knowledge than I did, and a lot many more years of interest in. Mm -hmm. Buddhism, secular Buddhism, Stephen stuff. Um, so that I came, I've come into it quite late, but they've obviously come quite early. But one of the interesting what things did... was how much I think Stephen has moved from when he taught the first two year tranche. Because thinking about it, we're now a year away. From the end, so we're. Mm -hmm. So it was. It's been a year ago since we last had a session with Stephen, and so for them it's three years. Mm -hmm. Presuming one course followed on straight after the other, and that, in that three-year period, if you if they've not had sessions with Stephen or run courses with him, then their their understanding of where Stephen is now will be different. Because mm -hmm. there was quite a yeah. lot of talk about Stephen being still sort of married to the Buddhist perspective, mm -hmm. and maybe that he should be move, moving on from that. And I was actually saying, well, I think he probably has. Um, I think so. Um, because when he was with us, he certainly had. And he was sort of mm -hmm. saying that I don't really think I would rather like to get rid of the Buddhist mm -hmm. label. So. Mm -hmm. That was interesting to see that if you, the, the position that we were in, feeling quite relaxed about this and Stephen moving away from Buddhism, but just using the ideas, has come from our being, our interaction with Stephen on, on the course and as, so. that, as that developed. And I if you weren't so. there, you wouldn't recognize that. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how that. Um, I, I, I sort of mentioned that I said that I think that you'll find that he hasn't but but then thinking about the presentation on Saturday, he didn't really address that. He, he didn't he didn't start where he left off with us. He started mm -hmm. more from the beginning again. It was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I must say, this roadmap thing that he's presented with 36, whatever it is, and he says, you should read this as a, a map for the course. I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, yeah. I, I don't know about you. Did you, have you, does it? I haven't, well, I haven't even read it yet, so I don't know. Um, All right, okay. But yeah, I'll get around to it right. probably about five minutes before the <laughs> next lecture. Well, it, it, when he said, oh, this is the map, and I think, well, I like maps, and I'll look at a map um, as you would if you were planning a journey. I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I was lost because it's a map made up of words. Yes. Uh, maps aren't made up of words. Maps are made mm -hmm. up of symbols to represent a landscape. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how those symbols make up. Well, I because, my, some, because my mind doesn't work that way, I think. Yeah, but, but, but in some ways, I mean, a lot of the, the terms um, that he might use are, are, are sort of like, you know, place markers um, in, in some ways. Um, so, you know, it, it sort of, I mean, I haven't read it yet, so I should... Well, uh, well look, I'll, I'll, I'll get up and you can, I'll come see if I can do the magic with the computer. Um, uh, and share it. And share it on the screen. Oh, it's like I've disabled it for some reason. What's happened? Um, 
I, I can't sh um, find where I can get it shared. Right, I've got it. So, how do I do that? Share screen. Yeah. Button on the bottom. yeah. But the problem is, I don't think it's allowing it. Host disabled participating screen share. Yeah, you, that's, that, that's, that's what I mean. It. I'll try. Um, I can't seem to find it on this. Um, I'll try, try, try getting into this other account and uh, try and change it. Let's see where I'm at. Can I try that? Okay. Um, just up to. So it's got a big uh, exclamation mark in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see if I can find it. So I, 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 I'm sort of further along than I was. No, I've got open system preferences. But there's something on my machine, I think, that's not allowing me to do it. Hmm. I think I'm not is... able to record the contents of your screen until it's yeah, here it is. You can choose. Okay, I've I've got it here. Ah, okay. I'll just try. Ah, okay. There you go. Okay, 32 dimensions. Yeah, you got it. All right. Excellent. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so how this is, is the roadmap? This? Well, I guess these are sort of place markers. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe you could call that a map, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it will serve as a road map. That's what it says at the top. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got one, two, unification, letting go of activity, vision, Observation. That's it. it. Not, that's it. There's only four, and okay. they obviously in that each task is the four tasks as we're familiar with, yeah. and then above the task on each one we've got a path, and I, he's now talking about the four paths, and I think this right. is obviously something he's going to shift from tasks, which we're familiar with, to paths. So we've got. The 
first one, embracing life, which is which is formation, the path. Second one is letting go of reactivity, which is unification, as the path. Third one is beholding the stopping of reactivity, and the path for that one is vision. And then we've got cultivating the path. Which is the eightfold path, and then that's called cultivation. That's the path. Mm -hmm. So we've got. So so I think what he's going to do is is give us some explanation for what formation, unification, vision, and cultivation mean in his and how they how they are taking over from or uh, mm -hmm. moving alongside the tasks which we which we sort of know. So alongside Elsa. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a vowel for each one, and then he's put in an element of colour for each one. Don't know why. And then we've got this thing with virtues for each, and there's, there's a lot in the first one. Anyway, um, mm. so it's a map that needs a lot of interpretation. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe it's not so much a map as a, a sort of a, a thumbnail abstract. Yeah, well, that would that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, we'll see. It's called a map, so um, um, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a literalist, and uh, yeah. somebody, calls, somebody calls it a map. It's, it's a map. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, well, I guess we'll just have to. Well, I, th I think you're you right. I think an abstract is more. more. Mm -hmm. Where are we? And then the other part of that, no, that no, that on that one, there's just a, the essay that he wrote, which is which is from a long time ago. But we're also yeah. the other homework thing was to read this section from after Buddhism. Yeah. Which is. It was quite interesting. I read that again, and actually, I thought it was better than I remember it the first time when I read it. I think it was, yeah, some of it uh, is in chapter three. Yeah, page. yeah I, I, I've sort of uh, read and listened to, to, to that book, sort of, I've really lost count how many yeah. times. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yes, I, I can almost recite it. <laughs> I think St Stephen could ask me, you know, uh, could, could you recite? You know, after Buddhism, I'd say, yeah, sure, just like Ananda can, you know. So that, yeah, so that was quite. But again, that, to me, goes back to the stuff which has had the most impact on me, I think, the side of the eye, because it's all about reactivity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. For me, that's the most significant mm -hmm. tool, if you like, of of the Dharma teaching. Mm. But um, yeah, I think it's probably the course so far is what I, if I, when I imagined it, it's probably a bit like that. And I'm not, still not convinced how much value there is. Mm. I, th I think that, well, for me, I, I actually only speak for myself, of course, but the, for, for me, that the, the value is in, is you know, obviously participating, but in trying to get um, different perspectives on Dharma from a different set of people uh, under different conditions of, um, you know, of, of the course, you know, being online and all that. Um, you know, so I, I think, you know, for, for me, that is, the value, you know, it's going to be a little bit, you know, we've been here before and all that, but, you know, obviously should expect that. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, I mean, he has been reformulating these things and rethinking some of these things. Um, I don't know how successfully, we just, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, th I think, you know, so far, so good.
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. We've got, we've got about six weeks, have we? And then there's a break yeah. in the second course. Yeah. So second. yeah I, I think um, I've lost my Zoom. I can let go. Oh, okay, I'm back. Um, Mm, yeah, so, so we've got six weeks and then a break of about a month and then another six weeks. So it would be interesting to see how many people sort of you know, drop off. Um, is, uh, how many people were there? Was, well, there was 200. more than 200 signed up, but mm. there were only about 160, I think, last week for the first one. Yeah. Some of those yeah. arrived late because they got the wrong time. Time zone, um, yeah, or, or or some could not might choose to just watch the recording. Yeah, perhaps. For sure. mm. I mean, in a um, way, yeah. I don't think there's much. I mean, the, by being there, you get the opportunity of those breakout rooms. <clears throat> but I was I, I was I was a bit surprised that they changed the the people in the groups because I thought. You'd have a breakout group rather like our discussion group, so you'd have a, you'd get to know the same people. And I mm -hmm. thought, oh, it's changed. But then I thought, well, actually, it's quite nice to change because you've got different views, you've got more different views. But on the other hand, if they only last 20 minutes and you've got six people, you get five minutes of three hours, three to five minutes of each person. So you really, it's not a great deal that you can glean from that. Mm. Yeah. Because you've got the same thing about not knowing where people are coming from. But I suppose if they're just addressing one particular point, then you do get mm. different, mm. different viewpoints. Well, I guess the next couple of weeks will will tell you know, how it's going to develop with the groups, especially. Um, so to wait and see. But yeah, I'd be interested to see how many people actually keep on with it and how many drop out. You know, although because of, even with the, um, the 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 course we did, oh, I mean, I don't, okay. there was a, a few dropouts. Oh, you you you're there, Elfie. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Yeah. Stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had your time. I gave you opportunity. <laughs> it's all it's all recorded. We're not hiding anything. <laughs> oh, hello guys. Well, well you can tell us now how, how your experience with your group went. Well, I uh, well, was in the same group as me. Oh, yeah. of course, damn it. Yeah. But, but, My yeah. experience was lovely. Rupert was so kind to me, Gary. That was just amazing. Oh, really? I, I just okay. left glowing, you know. Oh, oh. Thank, thank you, Rupert. That was... <laughs> yeah, he gave me a big shout out. Huh? Uh, so he's covering for you. I'm, he really told, did. <laughs> I only ever tell the truth, Alfie. Huh? I only ever tell the truth. Ah. <laughs> well, well, what was your experience then? You, you have got your take on that same group. So that, that could be interesting itself. <laughs> and you haven't heard and you haven't heard yet what, what Rupert had said. So that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh so far so good. I mean, I met some guys in the breakout groups in the big seminar, and I thought oh my god you would you are hard work uh, you know <laughs> mm. so um uh, I, so i i think at the moment I, I escaped lightly you know having a great mate on the group and not such a hard work person in the group i feel so far you know I, I think they they must have bunched out they they thought about these groups because you know seven of us and five have done the secular dharma course so there's there's uh, politics behind that they put us together and uh, the six is uh, the neighbor friend of one of them so that wasn't accident 
-hmm. and and then uh, the newcomer Gary is someone who is also has followed Stephen for ages. So they said, oh, he will do for Dharma group material. I, that's Gary Bourne, I think it is. Yeah. He's, do I, you know I, him? Uh, hmm? Only by accident, because Arlene kept, kept, keeps sending me emails for him, you know, relating to uh, just um, IT stuff or something. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that everyone was quite respectful. Let the others talk. Um, was um, it, no, no one was uh, actually. I thought for first meeting it flowed really well. I must say, because mm -hmm. I heard from everyone, and I heard an individual voice from everyone, and um, uh, there, there, yeah. So that there wasn't someone who just really needed to. Um, I hope I fitted in. That's all, you know, and not showered people. Yeah, is that Rupert's impression too? I don't know how feeding it is, but not a bad stuff of totally new group. You know? mm. Yeah. Yeah, my, I would say more from a. Um, a practical point of view, how different it was meeting people only uh, virtually and not having opportunity to meet them incidentally, you know, just the odd conversations that you have, have a cup, cup of coffee or where you get to know somebody a little. Mm -hmm. So I found it difficult knowing somebody in a different way to just having them speak to a group, which is a different, you know, if you just have a chat with somebody and you just talk about stuff, you, you, you get to know them in a different way to if everybody is doing a sort of small presentation to a group of not big strangers, but some of the people in the group were strangers to, to other people, and therefore your, the way that you come across, whether that's virtual or whether you're just in the group, is slightly different. So that's how I felt it was, I was less engaged and could get less from it than I would have done if I sort of had the opportunity to to know them a bit better. And I'm not sure how that can happen on a, on a virtual um, thing. But I think maybe it's just, you know, it's just how people are. I mean, I just think it's, you know, some people can can get more out of it. It's the perhaps more slightly formal process than um, the, the informal getting to know you. It's actually thinking about it, it's a bit like the stuff that Stephen's asked us to read about knowing the Dharma as something that can become a sort of second nature in the, the way that you know your town or you know somebody. And that <clears throat> level of knowing is a different type of knowing to knowledge. <clears throat> Get from reading something I know because I love everything that you do. So there's a there is that sort of difference I think I find at the moment. There's not a, an ease, and I'm not and I'm not sure whether the ease will come because uh, it's the informality I think of relationship which creates a an easier platform for understanding. And communication. I'm just making all this up actually, as I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a sorrow about that, isn't there? Is that all we, we have, you know, it's, and it's in, in our whole life at the moment, Gary, now in, in Britain, you know, with our way of life so diminished, really, and especially meeting in that informal 
and easy way. That's just not happening in, in to an, any extent. And it's it's tough. It's getting to us. It's getting to me and it's getting to everyone that I am in touch with. And my my clients, everyone is is starting to really suffer. It's um yeah there's sorrow. There's sorrow about it, I think. Yeah, we, we had an interesting experience this week. You know, we moved into this, this new house, and I, I think I said the first week that we've got a problem because we've got these two beech trees at the front, and they're causing, apparently, they're causing subsidence to the front of the house. So our front of our house is falling today. Um, and we were going to wait until we had all this surveys and everything done before we communicated with the rest of the street um, the fact that we got a problem and that there were one or both these trees might have to go. But in informal discussions with our neighbour, um, he's taken it upon himself to go round the street and write a letter which looked like a petition when it came back to us because it was a letter with lots of signatures on it. Telling them how, telling us how, first of all, welcoming, welcoming, welcoming us to the street, and then several paragraphs of why we are, we shouldn't be putting trees down. And so it sort of it's preempted the what we were going to do later. So in a way, it again, that's not going to happen anyway. So, but it would have been. It would have been easier to be able to present the whole picture rather than just a perspective. Which, which so Lynn was a bit upset, and, uh, and uh, I, I had some reactivity to deal with, but that was that was good. That was useful. That was all as they always are, you know. Um, but it was it was something that. I think wouldn't have occurred without lockdown because there was no opportunity to, to, to discuss with people. So it, you, it does change the, the nature of relationships. And, but since then, I wrote a letter to explaining everything to, to those people who had written to us. And Lynn went round and knocked on everybody's door and wanted to tell them direct to be you know, face to face that this is me and this is what I'm, I'm not we're not just going to communicate by by written word and that was that was great and it worked very well but there were a couple of people who, who weren't in or she thinks maybe were in and weren't answering the door um and so but but the fact was now I think we've been able to talk to everybody but it does, it has meant that, that yeah, the circumstances are, are much more difficult because of the situation we're in, but, but, because of lockdown. I know the snow did now, but I mean, but it was made, we, we, we cope with that, you can still go out as well. And you're not able to have the normal conversations that you have with your neighbors. It is, um, yeah, it does, it has made, it made life quite, it's made quite, life quite difficult. Are people afraid to interact? Is that your feeling? Well, it, it's actually illegal. I mean, social interaction is banned. It's, uh, <laughs> um, well, you, it's, it's bizarre, but um, you're not, unless it's essential, you're not allowed. You can have people, we've got plasters in down some compasses and banging and so on, and then but that's okay. You can have people coming into your house to do essential work, but you're not allowed to have social interaction. So if it's essential, you can do it, but not essential. So I went to get some tools from my son in London last Saturday. And I could justify it because I need tools. I mean, I could, you know, I was stopped, I can say, 
this is essential. I've moved into a house which is falling down. I need these things. So that's essential. I can pick them up. But as, as it happens, he's my son, so I have a chat with him. You know, it's like, you know, but you can, that, that's actually the rule. So I looked it up and then I wanted to check what I was doing was, was okay. And it wasn't really, but it was sort of. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's an odd, the way it's been, the way it's presented is a bit strange. I mean, obviously, people do talk to each other when they when they can, but you're you're sort of not supposed to. But anyway, I'm not sure that was why the, it was presented to us in the in that way. I think because you think, well, if you've got a problem with something, you go and talk to them. That's generally what you do, don't you? You think you shouldn't be doing something. But the way that this happened was that. You know, when somebody goes out and they talk to all their friends, and some people are not particularly their friends, and they get them to sign this letter, and then they post a letter when we're working. And you think, well, why, why, why don't we just come out and chat and, and, and talk? So, so a lot of the people who signed it have subsequently said, oh, we are sorry we couldn't talk to you because of lockdown. But the person who did it, he thought, well, you haven't really got the excuse because he's our next door neighbor. And we've chatted to him several times because he's not over the, over the garden fence. So, anyway. Just as a matter of interest, I mean, I think you mentioned that um, the trees could be saved with a, a lot of surgery very expensive surgery. Was that the case? Well, we thought that initially, but in fact, because they're beech trees, apparently, if you do the what would be necessary to them, it'll kill oh. the trees. So, yeah. so you can't. Um, uh, yeah, it's, we've got this, we now have this, we've had this specialist survey done by a arboriculturalist which is a very difficult word to say. I'm getting, getting the hang of it. And he's a sort of structural engineer for trees. So he, his job is to understand how trees affect buildings and so on. And he said, yeah, definitely use trees. But he's also said, my job's to save trees. So I don't want to cut them down. So it, it might be that I think he's going to suggest, which is what Lynn wants to do, which is cut down one of them and then manage the other one, which is to means that you can trim it a bit and then monitor the house over the next year. So I think that's probably which, which probably, in a way, if everybody thinks we're going to cut down two trees, then we'll find a way to make it happen. Well, you know, you could send them the bill for the surgery and sort of say, okay, you all sign this, let's all share out the cost. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are all sorts of it's well it's not they say the surgery is now not going to is apparently not wouldn't be wouldn't solve the problem but i i felt like saying well i'm not quite happy to go and plant beech trees in your garden if you want i'll pay for them but you can have them in your own garden so everybody's <laughs> in fact we've got one person who's like i've had that lovely view for 15 years and uh, it, would be, it would be a disaster if i didn't have that view anymore i'm like yeah well so did I get that right? Because you 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 are far away, and the sound is a little tricky for me. He oh, went sorry. around the neighbor, and he went around the neighbors and made them sign something. Well, he didn't make them. He, he, he obviously asked them <laughs> if they'd like to sign this letter. Oh right, and they did. You got this letter with all these signatures. Yes. I, I oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes, well, it was, it was, it was like a, a petition. Mm. So it was like you know, a petition with these things. And that was That's why I was, I was just suggesting, because they put all their names on, where you can say, okay, to, to solve this problem, it's going to cost this much money. And so we'll divvy it all up. And, uh, because, you know, because you care so much about these trees, you're, you're obviously prepared to pay to stay with them. Um, and so, you know, when people are asked to sort of put their money down, I mean, some people do, um, and uh, others may not. Uh, 
but they, I guess, understand that, that, you know, that you're not a tree murderer, that you don't actually hate the tree. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess that's, you know, they're thinking that you sort of just rob in there and the first thing you do is chop down that damn tree. Yeah, exactly. Um, which, which homeowner does that? Um, yeah. That's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, well, that's the way it's sort of being presented. So, but, um, yeah, well, I know. Do you need to do something quickly or do you have time? Uh, it has to be done really, yeah, fairly quickly. Because okay. the, the problem is that what's happening is that the, it's, it's working on a, on a yearly cycle. The, the trees are taking moisture from the ground. Mm. And the ground here is called mud rock. And mud rock is actually good rock. But on top of the mud rock, there's some mud rock which is not yet fully mud rock. And so it's elastic. It's plastic. And mm. what happens is it, it's like clay. And when it dries, it shrinks. Mm. So in the summer, when there's no rain and the moisture in the ground is taken out by vegetation, the clay shrinks and the house falls down. And then in the winter, when the rains come and the vegetation's dormant, the clay swells again. So it gets mm. bigger. So the house goes back up again. Mm. And every year it gets worse because the trees are bigger and the climate is drier. Um, and the house becomes more <laughs> flexible <laughs> because it's got bigger and bigger cracks in. Mm. So it's like pulling something. Then you're just you know pulling it, pushing it, pulling it, pushing it. And, and really, that's not for houses, generally speaking, not a good thing. To... So the cracks in the house when we before we bought it were <laughs> 10, 10 millimeters, and now they're five millimeters because they're because it's swell, swell. So if we don't do anything before the summer, then we'll it'll fall again. So any work that we do to fill up or cracks to fix everything to do the decorating and everything all of that will go because it will crack again so yeah we don't we have to do it quite quickly so but the, the real problem is that this hasn't been managed previously these trees have been allowed to get to a ridiculous height 20, 22 meters and they should have been managed much earlier, 20 years ago, in, in which case it wouldn't have caused a problem now. But nobody bothered. Anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, that isn't really the problem. The, pro the problem is the fact, the way it's been done is, is that, and it's been exacerbated by the fact that lockdown, we couldn't. Yeah. Talk, See, when something like that happens, I, I, I my my method nowadays it would be to not to see that the tree is neither here nor there you know it's not that someone is such a tree lover someone doesn't like change uh, in any way and so there's a newcomer coming in and wanting to make a huge change to the look of my street uh, it could be a tree it could be knocking down garages or building them or whatever it's just change it's not about trees necessarily and uh, they, they panicked, you know, you chat over the garden wall about the problem of the tree and off that person goes and does a petition. I mean, that's overreaction in a way, you know, that is panic. And so you're dealing with someone who um, is reactive in that way, aren't you? I mean, that, that is total, that, that is a good example of how someone and, and is reactive and can't contain themselves. He couldn't do anything about that other than what he did. No one wants to go around with making people sign stuff, but he couldn't help himself. So there's a panic person who doesn't like change and can't contain himself. 
that's all you know, you know trees or not trees i think that's totally secondary so how to treat how to deal with a person like that you know that it's it's staying kind uh, uh kind of ignoring the tree bit and just being reassuring, not taking it personally. You know, how can you get him down from his panic tree, basically, rather than having to convince him that trees are fantastic or, or that trees need to go? It's like, how can this guy is asking for reassurance? And, and, and everyone else, you know, if you're presented with, do you like trees? Do you want them felt? We'll put the they don't want to fall out with him. They just want to get him off their doorstep. I wouldn't take that too seriously either. You know, he pressed them. They didn't want to deny him. And if you talk to them and say, look, the trees are making my whole house fall down, they will, uh, a good many of them will see your point and, and get over it. You know, that, that again, the signature is just of that moment when someone Hot gives me the pen and said, sign here or you are against me. Do you notice how panicky I am? You need to do this. Otherwise, I will just kind of get a fit in front of you. And then it's your problem. You know, it's, it's these things are so human. So how can you? Yeah, you just, you know, you got all these well, uh, facilities. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's quite you talk because with them. The you you reassure exactly. him. <laughs> the reactions are exactly what we've been saying, in that some yeah. people are very with him. Yes, this is a disaster. Two, the other extreme was I really didn't know what I was signing. I just, you know, just came out. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One, one guy was really lovely. He's a, a, a baker, a uh, young, quite young chap. And uh, down here, it's a bit like, um, Shoreditch on sea. It's a bit like a bit of Hackney in by the coast. With with we get sort of um, we haven't I don't know whether we've got micro breweries yet, but we but he's a he's a sourdough baker. So it's a sort of very much the, the sort of trendy things that you get in London are happening down here. And this is what he does. He, he does this sort of specialist baking, and it. This, I think that we went round and gave our responses to people. I think it was the day before Valentine's Day. And he'd obviously been making little Valentine's shaped biscuits, specialist things. So he came round that evening, having got the letter from us, and said, Well, look, this is like a little gift for you as a sort of a token of, I'm sorry we upset you. We didn't actually say it, but he, I think, you know, he was like, this is a way of making contact. So oh. it was it was lovely. Mm. You know, so mm. there was a little yeah. heart-shaped biscuit. So it's it's those sort of things which we would have been able to do. We would have been able to make those contacts. And we there's a, a gay couple across the road who we met, and they were just amazing. They were like, we, we've only just moved in, so we thought we'd better sign because we're like, you know, we want to keep up with the people here. And, and one of them said, no, I felt really bad and I should have come around straight away and said, well, you know. Oh, and they took us around the back of their house and we were in there looking at their garden and stuff. So, no. But then there were a couple of people who have, you know, are, are still are very concerned. So yes, we get you get the spectrum, which is exactly what you'd expect. Hmm. It's just the way that it's happened is unfortunate. And I and I suspect has only happened because of of COVID, and it, it just wouldn't have happened. It's where we, it would have been much easier to speak to people, talk to people, and have general mm -hmm. conversations and let stuff emerge rather than a very formal writing a letter like this. But who knows, huh? Ah, you can life, handle you know, that. I mean, that's just that's just how things are, and I'm I'm not. You know, there's good things and bad things, and and yeah, it's there's impermanence. You know, it's uh, you know, things aren't there forever, and <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I forget how I got into it, but it was yeah, it's sort 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 of interesting how how circumstances have dictated a change in social interactions. Mm. Mm. Like, 
it's not. So. Ch chopping down a big tree is all, always traumatic, I think. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. Um, and uh, in a way, it's time heals. So <laughs> I say, I think, I think that there were going to be two trees chopped down, and now there's probably going to be one. That's a, that's maybe, a maybe, maybe you should have a preemptive funeral. <laughs> 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 what? Because, get, get did you think of together. a burial or of an incineration? <laughs> oh yeah, cremation. Yeah. Yeah, cre cre yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be a very long cremation because we'll probably take yeah. the wood and use it for fuel. Mm. Oh. But yeah, it's, 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 I, my my only thing is always ahead. You know, when I get, I I have ex my experience with these pe with people like this who can't contain themselves and can kind of just totally overreact, like you know, gang up in that way. You have only just mentioned some problem, and is is full steam ahead. You know, I, that's my my now my tactic i have to say the coming out of i want this to be peaceful so i, I think i have good yeah. ethics behind it but i am also very uh, you know in that way that i this turning towards is really big for me if i can't always do it but i would my uh, ambition would be to really turn towards that guy and say i'm so glad that you asked everyone in the road what they thought, you know, it was a really good way of discussing what needs to be done. I, I will be, also, I, I'm so concerned about the trees. I'm just like you, you know, the, the trees, uh, it's, they, it, my heart is filled with sorrow about losing them and they will go. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 to an extent I agree, but I can't, I, find, I can't lie. I mean, I can't, you know, I mean, I can't say that I love them um, if they are not lovable. No. So I can't. No, I can, you I don't need to like. No, I can appreciate but... other people's perspective, and I can say I understand and what this is. On the other hand, I'm too, I'm too objective in a way about most things, and that the more information I get about something, the more I understand about something, and the more that something seems this is this is reasonable it's when you were working against it's when you're trying to get other people to be objective and reasonable reasonable in that term that you understand the reasons for something and i do understand that most people don't work like that and that are they are emotional I, 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 and I, and I, I, I'm, I, I think time is the most essential thing because it's time that you, you have to, you need in order to be able to move from the emotional to the rational. You need time to be able to recognize. That. So what I'm doing is, is, I suppose, drip feeding information, the technical, scientific. Information and when everybody comes around, first thing we do is go and look at the cracks. Because when you see the cracks, it's quite dramatic the big cracks inside and outside the house. And that visual evidence is probably stronger than anything. So you have one side, you have a beautiful tree, and then the other side, you have an ugly crack. And they're both bits of visual stuff. And you, you've got to live with both of those. You have to sort of think, well, how, how do I marry the, the beauty with the ugliness? And because I'm living with the ugliness and the, and the, the danger, there's a, a, a my, my perspective is stronger, and I understand that. But it's also based on an understanding of what's going on. If you don't think the trees are doing any damage, then why on earth? What, how would you feel about somebody who's cutting them down? But if you see the trees, beautiful things doing damage, then you feel less enamored of them. It's my, my thinking. But we'll see. Anna Aaron <laughs> says, <laughs> sorry, you can go on there, Gary. Go on, Gary. Oh, 
I couldn't you build a, a tree house? <laughs> I, I haven't looked at it. They're, it's not, they're not really suitable to put a tree on the thing. Oh. Ah. <laughs> you could move. And, and I could just move the house into the tree. Yeah. Yeah. That would make all the neighbors happy. Yeah. I, I doubt it very much. I doubt that would. That certainly would. <laughs> But it's very interesting, the psychology and, and the, the street psychology there. Yeah, I think that is the interesting bit, isn't it? Yeah. And how it's not about trees, but it's about in, uh, interpersonal uh, things, you know, so that uh, how, how we all deal with such a, such a request and how such a request comes about in the first place. And yeah. nothing is about trees. And I guess that's when, when Hannah Arendt says, you know, if you have a believer like that, you cannot argue them out of it because arguments, um, rationality does not fit the question. It is never about, uh, but the, you do realize these trees make my house fall down. This is totally beside the point. <laughs> and therefore, a rational argument can never uh, fit the question that is asked by your neighbor. The neighbor says, will you uh, change my environment in, in a way that is detrimental to me? That is the question that needs to be asked. And, um, and, so, and, and then they panicked and they overreacted. So can you now go and tell him about trees? No, that, is, that would be like, what is the guy talking about? You know, he wouldn't know that he asked a different question. He thinks it's about trees too. And then if you have rational arguments about trees, he feels completely unmoved by it. <laughs> that is the nature of people's yeah. stuff, you know? So can you answer his question, which is like, oh, I love these houses. I really care for them. Your house. Is, it, is his house uh, the same as yours? Is it a whole row of beautiful houses? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, his is earlier. Uh, it, it was built earlier. Um, and ours was built in 1926, and this is Victorian. Um, and you know, you could look, at, uh, turn around away from the trees, look at both of your houses, engage him in that and say, oh, aren't, aren't they a fabulous pair? You know, they look good together. This is fantastic. And, you know, by the way, I need to take care of it by felling trees because it's not going to last. I, I would just, you know, see what he's really asking for and answer that because rationality, and I, I just, I think she got that right, you know, forget it that it works for you and making good decisions for you, but it doesn't help you in arguing with someone else. Because it's like arguing with a Trump supporter. Good luck, you know, they won't be open. It's, it, there, is, there is no rational thing that can be said that would change these people's minds. It's not even possible. Well, there, there is one, because if you changed Trump's mind, then you change the supportive mind. So <laughs> it just happens that the, it's a bit convoluted, but there is a, a, a tree surgeon who um, is a good friend of this neighbor. And the tree surgeon I I, I like is because he is. He is rational. He wants to save the trees. He's desperate to save the trees. But he is rational. And he's coming around. He's going to do some work in the bank. He's going to cut some other trees down. Much smaller when, when they're in the back garden. So. And I've been talking to him about... He was actually the one who said, you've got to... Or one of the people, one of the professionals who said, you have to have an arboriculturalist report. So we do have an... We've done what he has said. And the arboriculturalist report is saying the trees are the problem, which he didn't think they were. So he's actually thinking now, can, how can this be managed? And if we lose one tree, can we save the other one? Which is where I think we're all likely to end up. 
Now he is, as I say, a friend of this neighbor. So if you change Trump's view, if Trump changes his mind, then I think exactly. so that's I think, cool. So I think <laughs> ah, you be. got you got a good method going. That's yeah. that's I elegant. Think, yeah. I think that might be the way. I, well, it is yeah. the sort of way forward. So I, I, I think. Yeah. Because you can't if if in the end it was Simon, who is the the, the the tree surgeon, who who does the does the damage. Then you know if we employed him to do it, then you think I don't know whether we can take it that far. But if it did, then I don't think there could be a problem because he no, is, that he will is, change he it. Is Trump, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, that would be the wow. idea. So yeah, but no, I, I, it's but it's interesting, and and as you say, I don't know that I could have been could have reacted in this way without without secular dance, really, without going through all of that stuff about standing back, being, you know, look, looking at reactivity. And I, I might have done, but I'm, it's difficult to know, because how do you know what I'm not? But certainly it's made me think a lot about the nature of existence. You know, I am, yeah, these things are happening. They're not really happening to me. They're just happening, and because I'm not sure what me means in this context, you know, it's, it's a sort of like if I if I identify with the person who is feeling um, that their neighbours don't like them, what does that really mean? It's not. It's not. It's not a. It's not a fact. It's just a feeling, um, brought about by circumstance, brought about by culture, brought about. Or genetics by evolution that's the experience but it's not in a sense you know in a proper sense it's not real and and that it's 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 useful to be able to see it like that this is this is experience this is what experience is well then it's doing the job isn't it yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I noticed the difference between me and, and Lynn. Lynn got upset. You know, it was like, what do you think? She's, and now she's she's a sort of she's a sort of natural Buddhist, really, and you know, because it she tends to always think of interact social interaction, always think about, and I tend to think about practicalities, sort of logic and rational. But she's much more of that. What's other people? What are other people thinking? And it's it's about interaction. It's about social interaction. And so that's why I could write a letter, but she was she went round. I said, I'm not I'm not posting this letter. I have to see people. I have to talk mm -hmm. to them and say mm -hmm. I am delivering this because you know, we're so it's so it and that but when she met people, the anxiety just dissipates because. Obviously, you are meeting people, and people are not unpleasant generally. People are actually quite nice. Mm. So, anyway, it's 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 interesting. It's all interesting. Uh, food for the yeah, for the experiment. Gary, in your group, are there a practical Dharma people like that too, or? Have you got more theorists and and um, like uh, I met in the breakout groups, I met these scholars, you know, that were just about checking out another sect of Buddhism in a way, and secular Buddhism will do. <laughs> yeah, um, certainly I think the monastic was, was in that, or the former monastic, I think he is, although he, he runs uh, courses. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that could be an element for him. Um, he, he's sort of gone through a lot of different traditions. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, I mean, obviously, I think he's genuinely interested. There's, I mean, there's no doubt about that. And, and I think it's even a bit, a bit challenging for him, which I, I think, you know, um, he's conscious of. 
Uh, but you know, I think he was, he was just saying, you know, okay, let, let me have it. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's not, it's not as if he's stuck in, in a tradition. He's sort of, you know, moved around a lot between various traditions, uh, you know, as uh, Western Buddhists often do. Um, uh, but where he wants to go with it, I'm not, well, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just, he just wants to know more. Uh, but, but the other people, well, the Japanese woman was, you know, she's, uh, she was born into a, a, a Buddhist type culture. So that's sort of an, another perspective altogether. Um, so, you know, Buddhism for her is not really a, a, a big deal. You know, it's just, you know, it's just what it is. You know, it's, it's nothing special. It's, it's in front of her every day. Um, so, you know, I think for her, it's, a, it's the, I guess, the challenge of sort of looking looking past all the things that she might have assumed in her life and, and uh, looking at it from a, from a very, in a secular perspective. Um, the other guy is, you know, the guy in Hong Kong, the Scottish guy who lives in Hong Kong. Um, I'm really not sure. Um, he, he's sort of come through a, a, a Zen Buddhist um, type of um, uh, route. Um, so, so I think, uh, but he has seemed to have done you know, a, bit, a bit of reading over the years. And he's on a few courses as well with Body College, uh, online courses. Um, so, yeah, they're not really scholarly, which is good. Uh, or perhaps, you know, um, other monastic, I keep getting this man. Uh, um, you know, he certainly has a, an element of you know, scholarliness about him, but I, 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 don't think, I don't think that would become a problem. Hmm. Hey, cool. So you 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 you're right with your group. You find them interesting. Well, we'll have to see about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's very early days, and I think as we as uh, Rupert and I discussed, I mean, it, it's very difficult to know people, you know, um, online, especially you haven't met them face to face. You don't know where they're coming from, where they've been, uh, what their perspectives are. Um, or how the perspectives have been formed. All these things take time uh, and before you can actually start speaking the same or similar languages. Mm. Because we just, just in our group, we've developed vocabularies, you know, which, which I think might be slightly foreign to, to even people in our secular Dharma group as a whole. Would you, can you see that? Sorry, I didn't get that. Um, I'm, I'm just suggesting that the vocabularies that, uh, that we develop, or, or the understandings of vocabularies that we have, uh, are perhaps not the, you know, just within this group alone. Uh, if we can, you know, if we took uh, those vocabularies uh, to other people in, in the secular Dharma course, for example, for the most part, it'll be more understandable, uh, but there would still be a, in a, a slight sort of and because they're not sort of using the, the same language that we're, we've sort of been using over the past year, they would not be as uh, comfortable or, or as familiar uh, with that sort of language. I, I so when, when you're going in... Hmm? I noticed that particularly when everybody in, in the group, I think, was talking about Dharma. And I'm thinking, I, I know, we spent a year <laughs> trying to define what you know, thinking, what is Dharma? What, what, what is that? And yet there, there seem to be, oh yeah, well, I, I do Dharma, I, I practice Dharma, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, what, what is it then? So it was like, but you, as you say, yes, it's, a, it's this thing about definition, isn't it? You're, you're, you're using words, but do we have a shared understanding? And, and I, I obviously didn't. I mean, I, it was like, I'm having to guess what you mean. Because uh, I don't like to interrupt you and say, "What do you mean by that?" You know, it's a more of you, you sort of you have to politely listen, um, and yes, you sort of assuming that I'm that I'm I might be completely wrong because I I just don't know because they're the same word but might well be with different meanings. Well, almost certainly with different. Mm -hmm. 
because I, I was saying, well, I think I know what, I sort of think I know what Sangha means, and I sort of think I know what Dukkha means, but I'm not at all sure what I think Dharma means. Yeah, well, I guess it can depend on how sort of detailed you want to be about Dharma. I mean, I, I did actually ask that question uh, in the group, like, like tell me, uh, what do you understand as Dharma? And, you know, I got the usual responses, which were sort of completely vague and fuzzy and, and I don't really know. Um, well, you know, I, I really, you know, and, and you know, perhaps appeals to the sheer impossibility of, uh, of uh, defining something so elevated and, you know, so <coughs> there's that sort of attitude, which is very, very prevalent, <coughs> I think. You know, we should not define it because if we do, it'll blow up in a puff of smoke. <coughs> Sounds like maybe, uh, you know, in, in those two different groups, there uh, might be the two aspects of <coughs> asking that question in a way of, uh, in, in, sounds like Gary's group is more disparate and when you say, what is the Dharma, you might get, you know, there's not, not uh, the assumption of a common understanding. Whereas in our group with all these secular Dharma alumni and all that, there is an overconfidence that we all talk about the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, did you notice, Alfie, in our group, that there was a different perspective from, certainly from what I have, on where Stephen is in his progression away from Buddhism than they have. They seem, some of them, I can't remember the people, but there seemed to be a suggestion of the people that were on the first secular Dharma course and listening to Stephen on Saturday were saying that they, that they were, were thinking that Stephen was still too aligned with original Gautama, Pali, Canon stuff. Whereas my perspective was that in the, the end of our two year course, Stephen was saying, I really want to move away from the term Buddha and Buddhist, and I don't want that anymore because that, but I don't yet have another alternative. Did you see that? I, and I, I wondered whether if it was the case that it was because that it's now three years since they did the course. And maybe if they haven't had interaction with Stephen much since then, maybe that's what they were left with after the end of the first course, which was different from where we were at the end of the second course. That they they had a, a less Buddhist. Um, what they thought he had gone back to Buddhism. I, that they that they thought that he hadn't moved on from. The Buddhist label. Ah. Maybe it was just me. One of them had asked a question on Saturday, um, which he mentioned again in our group about um, the nature of or the importance of the original text and that mm. and somebody else in our group had said yes and I don't think Stephen answered that particularly you know he didn't talk about the, the way that he progressed away from it I can't remember the wording exactly but it, it struck me that I thought well actually I, I'm not I thought that Stephen had but, but he's using the course as a sort of I've started at the beginning and I'll move through and that beginning hadn't moved much from the original beginning. But maybe when he, but I suspect when he gets to the end, it will have moved on a lot. But that was just. I don't know if I understand you right, but my experience of that was like, ah, oh, Stephen is not on the progression at the moment in the way he's circular. He's mulling, he's mulling. You know, they, they thought 
that at the end he might have opened up to move away from the Buddhist thing a bit. And there we were two years later. Uh, we think that as well. But actually, maybe, and, and now we get pr the presentation, you know, very keen on the 38 what's it again. And uh, for me, that sounds very, very, you know, circular. That, yeah. That's just, he's going around the same thing. He can't quite let it be. He, he, there is not a linear movement here, but there should be, you know, from that might be now three, four years ago, and that's not apparent, not apparent to the first Dharma people. Uh, it's not apparent to me at the moment. No. He, so he's dabbling with it. It's, it, it's, but he can't quite get there. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know, because I don't know what's going to happen, but my thought is that he's, my, my thinking is that he's presenting it in this way, because you have to start at the beginning, if you like, but that, that there will be, it will move to a position over the two seminars, the two, the two semesters, but it will move to a position where it's much more like where we ended up last time. Well, that might even happen halfway through. But I think he's, he's doing this because of the nature of this course, which is opened, well, there's 200 people on it. And those 200 people haven't all been on his previous courses. So I think he's using this as a, a mini two-year secular dharma course. And he's going to use the first half, the first six weeks, in order to get to a position where we ended up. And, and the reason I think that is because he, he said to us, if you don't want to join the whole thing, you can join just the second half. And I think that was him saying, the first half is going to be covering the ground that I covered before and showing how I got to where I am, my thinking at the moment. But it's all a guess. It's all a, an assumption. Mm. No, I think you might, you might be right there. Mm. I have to leave you again because okay. I got yeah, yeah. well, to work. I've got, I've got oh, I'm glad I could check out. Yes, Sorry to yes. scupper yes. your your kind of <laughs> man friendship. <laughs> uh, good luck with the tree person, the not the, the tree hugger. And <laughs> sounds good, like you've got all right. Oh, and um, hey, see at least your name on Saturday, huh? Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. I mean, I I wasn't sure if I could handle a, a Tuesday evening meeting and then a, a Wednesday morning one, but uh, actually uh, I noticed I really loved it. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, this is completely different. Yeah, to me it is also. Yeah. And it's a bunch of mates, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be I'd, I'd I'd I hope I can keep it free. If you are for it, then then uh, yep. count me in. Great. Well, I'll just, if I just make it up, um, a regular um, recurring meeting, it'll just mean that, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, unless um, somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just make it recurring, that, that'll be a lot easier. So All right. Give them start I, I think it's just Wednesday. quite useful because keep in mind, because it only happened last night, so I can remember. Yeah, for mm. me, it's good. Okay, me, me, me too. Me too. Hey, lovely, brilliant. Okay. okay Bye, guys. Okay then. Bye. Okay then. See ya.